when we have patients with dry eyes, uh, we usually start with the history taking. Basically, I need to know what kind of drops they have been using, how long they have this disease, and what other medication they're taking. And if you have enough time, or uh, if the time allows, you may also perform the OSDI questionnaire and together with a tear osmolar test as auxiliary test. But the most important is using the sit lab. Okay? The sit lab examination is very important in diagnosing dry eye syndrome, may it be aqueous division or evaporative dry eyes. I will first start with the patient sitting there and I will prepare the fluorescein stain. Fluorescein stain is very important in diagnosing dry eyes, it is my preferred choice of stain. Also, the very important thing about putting into this, the amount of stain depends on how much the drop you actually wet your stain with. Usually, when I add a drop onto the test strip, I actually dab dry to remove the drop to have a rather evenly wetted uh, stain to add on to the patient. And I also stress you have to do the staining yourself. Try not to rely on your technician or your nurse because the very uh, uh, the different person in adding different amount of drop. So you can have consistent results and consistent assessment. After adding into the, the stain, I would ask the patient to blink a few times to assess the blinking function and also to assess the tear leg, tear quantity. And then you ask the patient to open the eyes for an extended long uh, period of time to assess the breakup time. Finally, I would uh, grade the ocular surface staining on the cornea as well as the conjunctiva and also as assess the lid margins by gently pressing onto the lid. That way you can assess the, uh, the amount of MGD, the severity of MGD, as, all, as also the quality of the minimum. And that's the whole set I would do in my clinical exams for dry eye patients. As MGD and ocular surface diseases are becoming more prominent in ocular surgeries, such as cataract surgeries and also laser refractive surgeries, more attention has to be paid onto the ocular surface condition. Uh, for example, uh, uh, some of my patients who were pre-operatively qualified for astigmatic control intraocular lenses, such as toroid lenses, uh, after we checked their eyes again, we found out they had ocular surface diseases. So using liquid flow to optimize the ocular surface, their extemporism preoperatively actually improved and that's uh, also led to the conclusion that they might not need extra uh, cost to implant uh, astigmatic control IOLs, such as toric IOLs. Another example with my patients are those for laser refractive surgery, such as LASIK or SMILE. After treating them with lipid flow preoperatively or even postoperatively, these patients have better vision and also better comfort after the laser refractive surgeries.